right. I, I may make two videos today, but um, today I want to express myself about um, television versus film and production value and um, I don't know, a whole lot of things, but it's really like television versus film. So I'm scrolling through um, social media particularly Facebook, that is my social media of choice, being that I'm a older generation, 50 plus, right, um, person, and um, I saw a, a post from Isaiah Washington, going from, I'm going to say Grey's Anatomy, but um, it was probably with something before that, anyway, um, he's an actor, right? And he's produced this old film. He's always been a, um, an activist actor, um, very opinionated. So he's got a film that he wants to. He says, "I'm going to take it to theaters," and you know that used to be a really big thing uh, before the quarantine. And I'm wondering if. It is still a big thing, and what um, that means for uh, his his picture, right? So let me explain. Like before quarantine, um, man, years ago, this because it hadn't changed. So I took uh, Gold Digger Killer to theaters, right? But I rented the theaters out, and it was a monstrous undertaking because you had to get your film to the theaters at the time this was 2006 most of the theaters only had a digital option for commercial for the trailers when they went to the regular film it was still film and uh, digital uh, or theaters are, are expensive because of the film right the film can run you thirty thousand dollars out. I, I'm guessing. Film can be expensive, ten to thirty thousand dollars per print, right? So to have a movie going out to all these theaters, those are all those are all prints, right? Those are all prints, and um, you gotta uh, have the money to print up those films. So anyway, that becomes the biggest obstacle for a low-budget film. Now, mind you, I made my film for under $30,000. Kind of, I haven't made a film over $30,000 yet. Maybe the death pledge, but that was a mismanage of budget. <laughs> Big time. Anyway, um, going to theaters also required a lot of marketing, but it's, you know, was where you got your money, you know, because you, you you got a theater that can hold 300 people, you're showing it four or five times a day, if you sell out at least two screenings, you know, that's good money, you know, let's look at it, a theater, uh, screening, $10 a movie, 300 people, sells out, that's $3,000, right? I sold out my hometown theater and um, kind of the other two theaters I did as well, but they weren't movie theaters. It is not impossible to sell out a screening. However, to do it on a national level and you need an opening weekend, all that, now. Nah. If you go city by city and do a tour and it's like a special occasion and if you're there, you know, they get to meet the, the filmmaker. A lot of people rather do that. Um, but you put your movie out there nationwide, independent. Woo, you got to have national advertisement and marketing. And that's also more than it costs to shoot the film. So you got to be careful with all of that um, stuff. So now, um, what happened with Gold Digger Killer, I went to digital theaters. So, of course, I didn't go to your AMCs, your Edwards, or your Regals. Um, I went to smaller, smaller brands, right? I mean, smaller theaters. And um, it 
it was successful. Now, um, at, and also in 2007, 2008, the Landmark Theater Group was um, moving to do, uh, what do you call it, um, digital theaters. So they were allowing you to rent them out and uh, things of that nature. That was all because they was thirsty. Then we hit this quarantine. Quarantine changed a lot because theaters closed down for the first time. And, you know, it was too tight, breathing other people's air, coronavirus. Theaters was a super spreader. So I don't know what it's like. I haven't been in the theater market for a long time. And now theaters have to fully compete with streaming. In uh, 2007, when my movie Gold Digger Killer came out, it uh, Netflix was still like a mail order um, blockbuster. You know, Netflix started off you would get a membership, they would mail you a movie, and you would return it, and you could get another movie as fast as you could return it. And then they started streaming, and Gold Digger Killer was a part of that first couple of years of them offering streaming. And uh, Gold Digger Killer made fourth in the summer of 2007 on, the, on Netflix, right? Um, but that wasn't the Netflix of today. What changed in, in streaming is ridiculous because understand, once a movie gets out, everything impacts it. Bootlegging, right? Gold Digger Killer was bootlegged. It was even bootlegged so bad that somebody showed the movie in a a bar in Philadelphia. And I was like, get the hell out of here. You know, they didn't bill it, they didn't advertise it, but they were showing it, right? Um, and they were selling DVDs of it in Philly and on, on in Miami. So those are places where I live, so I know they got it somehow. Somebody probably taped the screen and I never saw the, the bootleg. But um, bootleg quality was nothing, you know, trash, you know, yesterday because it didn't have to go up against streaming. Now, pirating and other streaming things have put bootlegging out of business. However, you know, when you're streaming, you, you know, you put your movie, it used to be you could put your movie up on YouTube and YouTube would pay you. Then they changed that because I guess it was too big. And now you can't put your movies up there for streaming. You gotta put them up there for pretty much purchase. The streaming, model that YouTube used to use, uh, platforms like, I'm going to say, well, Peacock, uh, I think they allow commercials, but I know Tubi is one of them. So Tubi is up there for free, and now you can watch these movies like you used to watch them on YouTube uh, with commercial ads, right? So you don't need a lot of, of, of followers. You don't even need your own page. They put it up on their site. It's certain searchable and you have to you have to put promote your movie because it's available up there um, there was another platform that was like that but Tubi has really branded themselves um, as that I watched a movie for my class a TV show um, Logan's Run for my class this last week on, on Tubi it was really cool and, and uh, all my movies have rotated through Tubi so anyway, now streaming is a viable option because of the quarantine. So when you say, I'm gonna take my movie to theaters, you've got upfront costs of, of uh, promotion and marketing, or you gotta do a city tour and you gotta go there uh, to promote it. I don't know what he's planning on doing, if he's gonna do some form of national advertisement. See, because when streaming goes up, They'll put it up for a month. They'll put it up forever, right? You have time to drive people to the site. People don't mind watching movies on streaming because it's like watching it on TV now. The major networks stream, you know? So you've got an internet connection. Watching uh, Tubi is like watching NBC. You got YouTube TV. That's not even a broadcast network. That's a streaming platform. So there's no difference now. 
it used to be, oh, I don't want to watch a movie on my TV or my computer. People used to complain, blah, blah, blah. You know, you couldn't get the internet on your TV. You had to hook your computer up to it. It was such a big deal. It was a problem. Now, it's uh, Gold Digger Killer on Tubi, and it pops right up. You know, um, but so that is all of the factors that come into play. Internet marketing is pretty much all you got to do when something is on the internet. So you, you got to worry about paying advertisement, the internet advertisement, and stuff like that. Um, I still love physical advertisement, whether it's uh, flyers, posters, or like I've been doing comic book advertisement. Um, so those things you still got to do. I mean, I still do, but they aren't as expensive as television commercial, national advertisement type campaigns. Um, so anyway, I don't know what's going on with, with Isaiah uh, Washington. I don't know what's going to happen with, I guess, streaming versus theater. Now theaters take digital, I'm pretty sure. But you still got to do the marketing. You still got to get it out there. I think theaters will give you one or two weeks, then you know, to to mo uh, motion your film. I remember um, IFC and some of these independent theaters in New York were open to Gold Digger Killer, but I was still going to have to promote it. Um, now there's just so many, so much content. There's always been a lot of content, but I don't even know how film festivals are making out, you know, the big ones, yeah, but the smaller ones, I really don't know, I really don't know, it used to be, you know, film festival everywhere, you know, like, the 4th Street Film Festival, you know, next week, the 5th Street Film Festival, you know, the short film, short people film festival, the tall people, you know, it was, everything was a film festival, so, um, another thing, that I thought of, and I'm now just like switching gears, but it's similar um, in this conversation, was, uh, what do you call it, the, um, low, like television, or not television, it's funny, I said, networks like Tubi, right? I wonder when they're gonna do, when they're gonna go to the next level, because right now it's a beautiful luxury to be able to put your film up there, you know, and they just take a percentage. They don't charge you a hosting fee or nothing like that, which they could. They could say, yo, you know, put your movie up, $10 will be three months, something like that. I don't know what they charge. I don't know if they do charge or not. I have a distributor who puts mine up. Um, and if I knew how to, to get on to be without the distributor, I would investigate that, but I'm not even making any more films for a minute, maybe till the end of the year, but um, I wonder when networks like Tubi are going to go to um, making the original content. They got all these movies, their original content, when they put up these movies, they're original, but you know, Netflix blew up by saying, Netflix original, you know, and they would put to produce it it would be a higher quality than some of the movies that they was putting up there. Um, so I wonder when Tubi is going to do that. Um, also, Netflix did uh, original television shows. Um, I love their original television shows. Amazing. Um, and I don't think they're acquiring them. I think they actually produce them. <sighs> the quality is just as good as regular television shows. You know, but they're like movie series. They're not doing sitcoms as far as I know. You know, they're like movie series. So that's a different format. Um, so I wonder if Tubi's going to do that. And then I wonder if we can do low budget television, like how Tyler Perry um, does the, the Oval Office and the Meet the Browns. You know, can you do something like that? Because as far as I see, when it's trying to do uh, a television show like The Boys, that's just like a movie. You know what I'm saying? It's more expensive because you got to do like eight episodes 
I mean, the DMZ was Rosario Dawson. You got Chief with, with a four episode run, but that's really a short run. Um, I don't know how you could do that. Um, maybe you could do that for a 2B. I have no idea if they would, you know, um, if they have low budget television. So um, when I go back on there, I want to see if there's more people doing a low budget television like Tyler Perry um, on streaming platforms. I'm sure there are because I know, you know, people were doing web series on um, YouTube and you was wondering well, how the hell are you getting the money back from your web series? You know, you've got to have thousands and thousands of viewers before you can able to have those ads pop up. And I actually like television commercials on Tubi better than the ads on YouTube? I don't know. That's another question. Uh, tell me what you think. But anyway, I'm over time. Thank you for checking me out on the Sci-Fi Express Lane. Uh, I was talking, I was put my producer's cap on today and was talking the business of filmmaking, um, kind of getting ready for this uh, film festival, the American Black Film Festival coming to South Beach next week. So um, I'm getting my mind right to start talking film to these guys, pitching stuff and just sharing information. All right, so like, subscribe, share, and comment. Four things. I'm like the only one when I watch these videos, nobody asks for people to make comments. I want your comments. Thank you.